In this section of the tutorial we're going to create our basic shapes for the face. We're starting with the file oneportrait-vectors.crv3d from the project folder and this is the file where we'd created all our basic vectors over the image and they'd been put onto appropriate layers. If we pop up the layer manager I want to start by building the base face shapes here. I'm going to switch off the layers, switch on that layer, make sure it's selected so that it's current hide the layer manager, go up to view and tile the windows vertically. Next we can go to the modeling tab and we'll start to actually build some shapes. The first shape that I want to make is the basic round shape for the head. So I'm going to select this vector here, come into create shape function and for the majority of shapes in this example we're going to use a round profile with a 90 degree angle. The 90 degree angle will give me nice sharp defined edges for my shape and then if I let it it would become very high if I use no limit but I'm going to govern the height by using the scale to exact height option and typing in values or using the slider bar. So we'll give this a name and we'll go ahead and hit apply. So that's created my 90 degree angled shape but only to a height of 0.05 and I may want that to be a little higher for this particular part of the shape so we'll just use the slider bar and maybe come up to something like 0.16. If I'm happy with the way that looks I can go ahead and say that I want to start a new component and we'll select the vector here, type in neck, this time I'm going to use a 90 degree angle and I am going to use this nice low height that we've got here. I'm going to set this to merge because I want it to merge with that head and we'll hit apply. During this basic shape creation I'm not going to worry much about the depths and the relative heights of these parts. I'm more interested in just creating the components that I want as we work our way through. Next I'm going to start another new component. This time we'll select the three shapes on the face. I'll call these base face shapes 2 and this time I want to add them to what we already have and make these 90 degrees. I'm going to put in a height of 0.1 and we'll hit apply. So it'll create those shapes and based on the combine mode here because that's a new component it'll add those to what we've already got. If we close out we can see those simple basic shapes that we've started to create to give us the underlying structure of the head. In this case I haven't done the far cheek because of the angle that the face is at in the painting means that this is a little further away than this. So that's just going to give us some of that shape later on when we start to create um, the finished parts. Next I'm going to go ahead and switch off those three components. I'm going to come back to the drawing tab, switch on the layer manager. If you have the room uh, with your display then you could always have the layer manager and show it in your display uh, if you've got space or on a second monitor. Here because we have the resolution for the tutorials I'm just going to keep switching it on and off. So I'm going to switch that layer off. Next I'm going to come and switch on the layer called Detail Face Shape. Select that, hide this, come back to the modeling tab and we'll start to create um, some shapes from this. The vectors on this layer represent essentially the next sort of layer of muscle over the basic underlying shape of the face. The majority of these I can model all at once, so I'm going to go ahead and select them all and then I'm just going to deselect these two below the mouth, the one below the nose and these two round the eyes. We'll go into the Create Shape tool, I'm going to make these 90 degrees and we'll scale these to a height of 0.1 and hit Apply. And I'm just going to give those so detail face shapes we'll call that. Now I want to add these other shapes into this but I don't want to create a new component so I'm just going to deselect that and I'm going to go ahead and select this shape under the nose. This time I want that to come down a little bit into the face so I'm going to take a curve profile I'm going to make this only 30 degrees and no limit and actually because I'm going to add this I want to make it negative 30 so that it becomes a slightly subtracted shape. So let's zoom in and then we'll hit add and you can see 
how that's just digging in to the shape that I've got there to create that indent under the nose. Next, I'm still adding to the same component. I'm going to put in a very low shape for these areas around the eyes and I want to merge these in with the other shapes. So combine with current shape set to merge. I hit apply. And then for the areas under the mouth, I'm going to bulge this area up here. I'm going to make this round 90 degrees. And this time I'm going to scale this up a little bit more, set to merge, hit apply. So that's a little higher than the shapes around it. And then even to add a bit more uh, accentuation in there because of the shape I've got on the original painting, we're going to make this round 90 degrees, 0.05 and set that to add because we want to add it to the shapes already there. 0.05 in this case looks a little high, so I may back that off. 0.02, hit the space bar to apply that. And there, I'm pretty happy with that, and that is the detailed face shapes. Next, I'm going to switch that off, come back to the Drawing tab, switch on the Layer Manager, and we'll take a look at the mouth. The mouth vectors are very simple. There's just a slight surrounding shape, and then two for the lips. Now you may look at lips and think that they're going to be a nice rounded shape because we tend to think of our lips as a rounded object as we feel them on our face, they feel rounded. But as you look at most people's faces, because of the angle of the lips tipping back into the mouth, and in this case because George Washington doesn't have particularly full lips, we aren't going to model these with a strong rounded shape. In fact, what we're going to do is give ourselves a very low underlying shape for these. So I'm going to come along and select this outer shape I'm just going to put in a 10 degree angle, no limit, and we're going to call this mouth. And that's just going to give us a very, very slight dome to add these other shapes to. And I'm going to take the lips, and in this case, I'm actually going to take the lips, and I'm going to pull them down slightly into the face. So we'll make these negative 30, and we're going to go no limit, and go ahead and add that to what we've already got. So we're actually pulling the lip shape back slightly. Now I may add a slight roundness to those with the same um, things, in which case what I may need to do is just close out here to accept that shape. And then if I want to continue manipulating with the same vectors, I'm just going to select it, come back to the create shape. So we're continuing to edit it. And now I'll be able to reselect uh, the lip vectors and continue to work with it. You can see some extra vectors have appeared and I'll explain why that is in a second. So here just to finish the mouth we're going to make this 90 degrees scale to height and something like 0 0.01 and that's just going to give us a very slight um, roundness or, or definition to the lips there but we're still essentially sort of pulling these back into the face. If I close this the reason that these other vectors appear is because my selected layer is still detailed face shape and not mouth. So as I built these components, they were put onto that layer. What I can do is say move to layer, move those onto mouth. We can come back, switch off both of those items we've got there, pick the nose layer, select that and draw it on here. Hit F in order to fit this back and we'll just hit, look down the z-axis in order to see the whole view here. The nose is quite straightforward. We're going to select this vector, say create shape from vectors, make it 90 degrees but this time I want quite a large shape. And so I'm going to put something like 0.3, hit apply, we'll change its name there. And again I'm not going to worry too much about the shape now because we're going to deal with that later. We'll just take that as it is switch that off, come back to the drawing tab, undraw that layer, switch on the ear. And now the ear, because um, we only see the bottom part of the ear, we don't need to do a very detailed job on modeling this. So all I'm going to do is represent the shapes I can see in the painting. And that is essentially a simple rounded shape for this part, which I'm going to make 90, scale to height 0.1. And then I'm going to take this inner shape here, make this 90 degrees, scale to height 0 0.5, add to the shape I've got there. I do want that to be a negative, not a raised shape. So I will need to come up and put a negative in front of here, hit apply 
so that we get the shape you can see there. If I close this now, and we can see I still must have the nose layer selected, so it's been put on there. I can move that to the ear layer, and we could go ahead and switch on all the components. We'll just maximize the 3D view. Okay, so there's our first set of basic shapes. Other than the neck, these are currently all set to add, which we've, is why we've got all sorts of odd things going on with the um, uh, overlapping areas of the shapes here. If we wanted, we could clean this up a little bit by um, changing the order of the models that we're working with. A good way to do this is to put the base face shape um, at the top here. I can move the neck down to the bottom because I know I want to merge that in. The ear, I want to merge, so I'm going to combine mode and merge. Now, the nose, the mouth, the detailed face shapes all need to add on to the base face shapes. But what I could do is take the base face shapes that we've got here, move those down in the list, and then take these top three, the detailed face shapes, the mouth and the nose, and set those combined mode to merge. And what that's going to do is blend those three together so that they're all merging on the same level. If we switch that off, then the base face shapes are being added onto that, or the large base face shape, and then the individual base shapes are being added onto that as well. We have the ear and the neck. So that concludes um, this stage of the tutorial. In the following tutorial, we're going to continue to create the basic shapes and we're going to finish off the ones we need by creating the hair and creating the shapes we need for the clothes. And we will continue using this same part, but in case um, you're coming to that tutorial first, what we'll do is just switch on some of these layers so we can see what's going on here. And we'll go ahead and say File, Save As, and we'll call this two portrait base shapes and hit save. So that'll be the file we'll continue with in the next tutorial that has these basic underlying shapes created for the face, the neck and the ear.